Well, um, I can just kick off and say, I, uh, you know, hello, my name is Devika. Uh, I'm a climate tech recruiter at Climate People. Um, been very fortunate to work alongside Chris, uh, Chris here, who um, recently took a job as a climate solutions engineer with SAS Global, um, one of our great partners. And uh, Chris, um, you've done such amazing work to get you through this process. Um, and I'm really, really excited to see all the work that you're gonna be doing um, with SAS. So, uh, you know, just to kind of kick off, can you um, talk to us a little bit about how your experience uh, was getting a job in climate? Yeah, well, I came, I mean, I've been trying to move towards this space for years at this point. Um, this, you know, I have a tech background in spatial science and you can go a lot of ways with that, but climate change is always the most interesting to me. So I actually have a master's now. I mean, what started this transition was getting a master's in climate change analytics, uh, spatial analytics for climate change and particularly resilience and adaptation. And then the climate resilience space right now for tech companies is super interesting. I mean, there's several companies that are going leaps and bounds above, above what's been done before and have a lot of potential to you know, help people understand their climate risk. So that's what pretty much led me here. I honed in on that space that I wanted to work in climate resilience um, and honed in on some of the tech skills that I needed to do it. And then uh, with Davika's help here, I you know, was able to connect with quite a few companies that were potentially good fits and one that was a great fit. Yeah, awesome. yeah so, you know, did you have any ex uh, barriers that you experienced, um, you know, throughout this uh, journey of engagement? And um, were there certain resources that helped you navigate these barriers? I mean, I think my largest barrier was figuring out how to allocate training for myself between a tech stack and between climate change and there's a lot of positions there that you know you are still at the end of the day working as a technologist as a developer of some kind but it's also important to have the climate change experience and have some idea of which companies are interesting and which are not and have some context there on the problem so i think that that's one of the the more unexpected challenges where you can be a great fit for a lot of companies, but it's hard to find, you know, if you're balancing yourself so broadly with climate change and tech, uh, it might be hard to find like the role within a company that you work at. But, you know, the one that I'm going to, I'm pretty excited about in that it has climate resilience, it has client facing interaction, and it also has engineering. Yeah, amazing. Definitely. I feel like most of our candidates that we work with kind of that's their initial thing that they have to overcome is I have this passion I have these skills, how do yeah. I put them together and that is a really difficult thing to navigate but. Yeah, yeah. your experience shows others that it's definitely possible yeah. so thinking back initially, why did you start caring about climate change, why did you want to get a job in this space. Um, I figured that, I mean largely I figured I was young that this was going to be the defining a defining part of my economy during my lifetime um you know have heard about climate change since i can remember um and so i figured one you know it made sense as something that at the end of my career at the end of my life whatever that i could you know look and say that i did something meaningful um that i you know did something passionate and two i figured honestly it would just be good for my career that it's a you know a growing space it needs a lot of assistance it needs a lot of bodies on it um and that uh, I didn't, I saw that there was a lot of opportunity here. Yeah, definitely. Climate change, meaning, and passion also go hand in hand with job security. So it's quite yeah. honestly the best of both worlds. Yeah. And Can it's interesting to see the different aspects of climate change develop where, you know, first adaptation and resilience, everybody was pretty easy to buy in on that because it's something that has like a personal, like you solve it for yourself. Yep. And now we've got, you know, decarbonization and renewables coming up in like a much bigger way and all of the effort that needs to be done there. Um, yeah, it's just interesting seeing the different spaces within climate progress. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, Chris, you have such an interesting background that you've built up with your, your tech skills and the niche areas that you've chosen to really dive into. So can you kind of talk to us a little bit about the job you took um, and a little bit about what exactly you'll be doing? Yeah, I mean, I'm working with scientists at Sus Global and with product managers and with the platform engineers 
to figure out what we're building essentially and to interface with the customers and uh, figure out what what they need, how I can help them get answers in the interim, uh, sort of an all purpose, you know, customer facing engineer so I can help understand the data science that's being done, the climate modeling that's being done, I can help translate that and I can kind of interface back and forth. That's awesome. Yeah, definitely. Time that's my happens. understanding at the moment. That might, that, you know, might change we'll a little bit on the lines. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Seems like it's like a definitely a needed field. So thank you for doing yeah, that. Certainly. Would you mind touching a little bit on your experience working with climate people? Have you ever worked with a recruiter before or a climate recruiter or anything in that regard? Um, I mean, I've been in coordination with recruiters, but typically when recruiters reach out to me, they're reaching out because they found my hard skills on LinkedIn in some way. So they did a search for a SQL engineer and I popped up and that's great. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was interesting to me that Devika reached out in a way that was emphasizing climate first. I mean, if uh, if you had reached out and said like, we need a Python engineer, I would have been significantly less interested, but you reached out and said, you know, it's clear that you're trying to get into this space. It's clear that you have things to contribute to the space. So I think that that speaks to the value of a climate specific recruiter. Definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, that is definitely like what we're trying to do the most is get more people working on climate solutions because ultimately, like you touched on, like it is going to be a reality and the more, more hands we have on deck, the better. Yeah. And while we are like super proud of that and it is like one of our favorite things we do, we also have our 1% for the planet program, which is essentially we donate 1% of every placement fee to mm -hmm. a nonprofit of the candidates choosing and we'll do that in your name. Mm -hmm. um, we sent over our two nonprofits. I can provide you a quick little refresher if you need it. But did you happen to choose which one you want to donate to? Um, could you give me your take on them, actually? Yeah, of course. So we have the Honold Foundation, which is the professional rock climber Alex Honold. It's his foundation, and it's basically helping to get solar energy a little bit more widespread mm -hmm. in different impoverished communities to help bring the lucrative benefits of solar. And then also we have. Um, Soul Fire Farm, which is a farming initiative that helps basically get more people learning um, regenerative agriculture techniques and just really helping, yeah, mm -hmm. improve okay. our system. So those yeah, are the two I mean, that we have. Yes, thanks for the refresher. I needed to needed that. Um, <laughs> no, it's a, I forget them sometimes that I've been doing yeah. it for. <laughs> no, I think of the uh, Soul Fire. I'd be really interested yeah. in having my donation go to. Awesome. Perfect. That sounds great. With all the sun ex you're experiencing right now, it's a yeah, sure. <laughs> perfect match. Perfect. So I think that was all the questions we had, unless Tabika, you had anything else that you wanted to touch on really quick? Great. That on my front. Perfect. Perfect.